Hey everyone, it's Robert from On My Turntable. Hope you're having a great day today. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a, uh, a band that's becoming one of my favorite bands. I've got so many favorite bands. I just don't want to say it's my most favorite. Well, I guess the Beatles are my most favorite. But I've got so many great favorites and this is becoming one of them. It's a band that's uh, better justified by listening rather than talking about, in my opinion because they're such awesome musicians. Um, their music takes you in different places. You could listen to a song one day and hear something completely different the next day by listening to the same song. Uh, this is just how great these guys are. We're talking about the band Yes. This happens to be a remastered version of the uh, album Close to the Edge. But before I get into it, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button below to my channel. I greatly appreciate everyone liking and subscribing so far. Uh, I just want to continue to provide great content to you guys, help you guys learn about these awesome bands, uh, these great artists of, music, of uh, great classic prog um, rock music uh, of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Um, it's all amazing stuff and uh, without um, myself and other people doing this. Uh, some people may not discover this type of music and it's a shame because it's just remarkable what these guys put out. So again this is Close to the Edge. It was their uh, fifth studio album. came out in 1972. Uh, consisted of uh, three songs. Um, Close to the Edge is the title track. It was actually a four-part movement. Uh, the second track, And You and I, um, it was a two-part movement and uh, Siberia Katra was the last one. The remastered version also features uh, two bonus tracks, um, America and uh, Total Mass Retain, and uh, a, a different version of And You and I and uh, Siberia Katra uh, called Siberia. Um, it has the great John Anderson on vocal, Bill Bruford on percussion, Steve Howe on guitars and vocals, Chris Squire on bass and vocals, and Rick Bakeman on keyboards and synthesizers. Um, wild guitars, keyboards, uh, calm, it, it brings you down at some point like a, into a calming state and then just goes wild again with, with amazing guitar riffs and heavy bass drums. Um, beautiful harmonies throughout. Um, flowing vocals, um, the band jams uh, so well together. Um, John Anderson's voice is remarkable all the way through. Steve Howe's guitar playing is remarkable all the way through. Um, the third track, Siberian Katra, um, opens with a great um, jam between the band. Um, and uh, it's kind of a darker song, but uh, just amazing, amazing. The um, one of the bonus tracks, uh, "America," is is pretty cool. It's um, it's uh, it's got awesome guitar work, and again, great leads and uh, heavy bass on it as well. Um, great, great album. Highly recommend listening to this this classic album. Again, in my opinion, one of their best albums. It's not to say it is their best, but it's one of their best. They've got so many one of this band. Um, jumping up to uh, their 13th studio album, it came out in 1991, Yes Union. Uh, this is more of a heavily produced album, I feel. Um, just as great. It's got John Anderson on vocal, who wasn't really involved in the album except laying down the vocal tracks. Um, him and another player, um, Trevor Rabin, weren't getting along all that well together. Um, so he came in and did the vocal tracks on, on uh, this album. But it still has uh, John Anderson, Bill Bruford, Steve Howe, Tony Kaye, Trevor Rabin, Chris Squire, Rick Wakeman, and Alan White. It also has 14 tracks on this album. Um, but uh, again, uh, it's not the typical three or four song epic uh, album that uh, that you're used to when hearing Yes, but still some great work. Um, it doesn't give me a, 
Yeah, the type, the the booklet inside um, says right off the top. It's in the in unpredictable tradition of yes. It took a twist of fate to bring about the completion of this album. Um, so uh, the band was kind of uh, moving towards different directions at the time. It was a couple of. Um, it was basically a mixture of two bands together to bring together a, a Yes album. But they were committed to the project and they put it together. I like it. I think it's a great album. Uh, I think you'd be happy with, with listening to it. It's just not the traditional um, epic albums of the past. The next one um, I want to talk about is uh, the Yes album. Amazing artwork in here. This album sounds wonderful. Um, it came out in uh, 1971. It was their third studio album. Um, got six tracks on it: three in the front uh, side, uh, three in the back side. Um, the uh, <laughs> Yours is no disgrace. It's just an amazing song. The title, tra uh, sorry, the uh, beginning track, uh, nine minutes and thirty-six seconds. Uh, uh, guitar runs, bass runs, amazing, amazing lead. Um, just a wild, wild song. It's cool. Uh, the second one, the clap, is a live version of Steve Howe on his uh, doing some great guitar work. Uh, Starship Trooper. Um, great is a third track, ba great bass runs, uh, spacey guitar sounds. Uh, what they did to get that spacey uh, background guitar sounds is run the guitar through uh, something called a flanger, which basically mixes two signals together to get that eerie kind of cool sound on it. Um, the uh, amazing I've Seen All Good People. Um, a classic rock radio station um, hit. Uh, it was basically a, a mixture of two suites together, uh, two songs to put this epic, uh, um, amazing song together. Uh, beautiful harmonies, um, guitar riff, um, and then uh, it settles down into playing. Uh, Steve Howe plays what's called a bachelia, a Portuguese guitar give that cool uh, classic guitar sound. Anderson's vocals are so good on this one, uh, it's just remarkable. And uh, a gentleman named Colin Goldring played the recorder on, on this track. Uh, so it's kind of slow moving, kind of airy, and then it becomes heavier and uh, towards the end. Uh, and then uh, ends with a uh, the first part of it ends with an amazing guitar solo by, by Howe. The second part of the song, um, great rhythm between the bass and drums, uh, great bass runs on it, and uh, the guitar work by Howe, again, is just amazing. Um, Adventure is uh, kind of a jazzier song. Um, it ends with actually with a jazzy piano solo at the end. It's uh, just a, a great, a great song. And then the final song, "Perpetual Damage," uh, was uh, kind of inspired by a, a view at a cottage at a place called Churchill. Uh, great bluesy guitar sounds. It's got some quiet moments to it. Uh, jazzy guitar and piano sounds. Uh, and then in the middle of the song, there's a great jam by the band. Um, just an amazing album. Um, yeah, it's just. Uh, this was also uh, Rick Wakeman's. Uh, Rick Wakeman had left the band at this time, so they brought in a gentleman called Tony K to play piano, organ, and uh, and Moog, and it had uh, again John Anderson on vocals, Chris Squire on bass and guitar and vocals, Steve Howe on, on guitar, uh, again as I said, Tony K on piano, organ and Moog, and Bill Bruford on drums. Classic album. And finally, 
I don't know what to say about this one, but uh, Relayer, an epic, epic album. Um, different lineup on this one. Um, this one had Steve Howe again, Chris Squire on bass, John Anderson. Um, on vocal, Alan White and Patrick Moraz. Consists of three songs. Um, where's my notes? Here, here we go. Sorry. Um, the first uh, first track is is the whole side one of the album. Uh, I think it's the most complex. Um, album to date. It came out in 1974. It was their seventh studio album. Um, they call it a sonic extravaganza in the reviews. It, um, <laughs> at the time of its release, uh, two other major bands were releasing albums at the time. Uh, King Crimson uh, released their final album, Red. And Genesis released their last album with Peter Gabriel in it, called The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. And then Yes came out with this, uh, this opus of, a, of an album. Uh, again, it was their most ambitious uh, and epic album to date. Um, <laughs> the Gates of Delirium, uh, it's a wild song. It, um, it's crazy. Uh, it's his Steve House work is unbelievable. It's got killer riffs, killer rhythm, um, mind-blowing song. Um, it's just so, so wonderful. Uh, kind of takes a couple of listens to understand it. I like it right off the bat, but, and the more you listen, just like any Yes song, the more you listen to the song, the more you understand the song and enjoy the song and love the song for what it is. Uh, side two begins with uh, <laughs> Sound Chasers. You kind of need a break after this one. Uh, go for a walk, cup of coffee, uh, smoke if you got them. It's crazy, it's messy, it's brilliant. At all at the same time, it kind of goes everywhere, but it all comes together as well. Um, yeah, it's just an amazing, cool, awesome song um, and finally um, the last uh, last song on the um, on this album um, to be over uh, it's a it's a I wouldn't say it's a slower song but it's a sweeter song kind of countryish at times uh, dazzling guitar work. Um, Anderson vocals are welcoming. Um, it's definitely a nice break from Sound Chaser. Uh, it, it, it's an emotional song. It's brilliant. It's powerful. Um, it's a beautiful song all around. It's, it's just an amazing album. Um, I don't know what else to say about this one. Uh, or any of their other albums, I mean, but this one itself is just an epic, epic masterpiece. And again, I'm still listening to it, I'm still discovering a lot about this album, but uh, it's so enjoyable. Uh, finally, I just have a compilation um, of some of their greatest hits. Uh, it's called Classic Yes. It's got uh, Heart of the Sunrise, Wonderful Stories, Yours is No Disgrace, Starship Trooper, as I had mentioned, Long Distance Runaround, a great song, uh, The Fish, You and I, and You and I, sorry, uh, Roundabout, and I've Seen All Good People, a great, uh, a great compilation, that's what's playing in the background right at the moment. So my collection will continue to grow as I uh, learn more about this amazing, wonderful band. I hope you've enjoyed, 
And uh, thanks again, and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.